And I gotta tell you, walked in, and we got two animals in studio at the same time. Two animals! Randy Couture and uh, Pat Cooper. Right. I don't know who I'm uh, more scared of. <laughs> <laughs> they, they both could destroy you. It, Pat can make you feel like a, a worthless nothing. And this guy could pretty much take the, your your head off your body. They both remove your manhood differently. He does it physically. <laughs> yeah. And Pat will just humiliate you while you're on the ground verbally. Yeah. Hey, you all right? What's wrong, Pat? First of all. Uh-oh. You're the animal. You and him. Oh, me and him. You Aunt? and your partner, the fucking animal. <laughs> yeah, why? So don't start and give us this crap. First of all, the gentleman on my right, yeah. Randy Couture, yep. happens to be a gentleman. Unless he sees an iron cage, then he'll tear your balls up. <laughs> Other than that, I'll take him on outside the cage. But in the cage, that's his business. Yeah. In my cage, that's my business. I'm funnier than he'll ever be, but he can knock me on my ass. So we're on, you know, we're on even terms. True. <laughs> Pat Cooper walks in. In, looks at Randy and goes, I'm pissed at you. For, this is the first words out of this guy. Because yeah. if I didn't say I'm pissed at you, he knows it ain't me. <laughs> he goes, wrong with you? you never gave me a title shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, How long do you think you last in the ring with him? I wouldn't last. Right now, I ain't lasting. <laughs> and I'm about seven feet away from him. The man is... MMA, he is. He's the man. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. here to flatter him because I'm a big fan of that. I only worry, and I say this you know, with tremendous dignity and respect, that someone don't seriously get hurt. That's what I worry about because in wrestling, mm -hmm. they've had problems. A guy from 90 feet wants to jump on a guy's ass. Do it on two feet. What's the big deal? <laughs> but these gentlemen and women, this young lady from Vegas, this Italian girl is dynamite. Gina Carano, yeah. Thank you. I love her. I, uh, I, would, I would marry in three seconds, but she could kick my ass, and so I changed the way. <laughs> they, they got women in Ultimate Fighting? Oh, really? Wrong, wake yeah. up. It's Thursday. Not, not, not I don't like <laughs> Wake up, schmuck. Why you got a show and you don't know what the fuck is going on in America? Because I'd rather watch men fight there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they have women in MMA now. Gino will be fighting on the 31st on Elite XC on CBS, actually. No kidding. Yeah. The, all right, so if they got the women involved, next step is uh, the midgets, I'm thinking. The midgets. Midget uh, ultimate fighting. They but there are, Randy, there are different venues in, in, in uh, cage wrestling. Different Am I correct? promotions, yes. In other words, if you... If you MMA, you could be XSX or W3L. Yeah. So, but who's the champ in this fucking world? I don't know who's well, the champ the, anymore. The, the strongest brand is still the UFC. They've been Thank around you. the longest, and, and there's several other players coming up that are doing shows. Are you still and, holding a title? Uh, I, I resigned from my heavyweight title with the UFC. I'm, you know I'm, something? I'm glad you did. I'm, you know why? Because I think right now you've done it all, and I think right now you're more important to the game because you have a great name and people like you, and you got a nice smile. So don't fuck around. I, I, uh, <laughs> why did he resign? Yeah, why Jimmy? did you resign? I don't know that story. Uh, <laughs> Another well, thing I, I don't know, Pat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to facilitate. Uh, you know, everybody wants to know who the number one heavyweight in the world is, and and uh, the old Pride brand from Japan. Their heavyweight was uh, Fedor Emelianenko, and the UFC couldn't sign him. Won't make the fight happen. Uh, and at this stage of my career, that's the only fight that really makes sense for me. I probably have one, maybe two more fights left, and. At, you know, 44, see the end, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. So we're trying to find a way. I have to get free of the UFC to, in order to make that fight happen. You're 44, you said? Can you merge? Yeah. Can all of them well, merge? Yeah, can you do like well, an I don't ABA, know if they can merge, NBA but thing? I think, they, I think that uh, we need an independent ranking structure so that the, and then the exclusivity that a lot of the promotions like the UFC and who's use. And considered? Rage to, is considered the number one man? Uh, oh yeah, Rampage is the number one guy at the light heavyweight division. Hey, absolutely. Light, who's the heavyweight the UFC. man? The heavyweight champion in the UFC right now is Noguera, Antonio Noguera. But who's the guy that was never beaten from Russia somewhere? Fedor. Oh, yeah, Fedor. That's the guy I'm talking about that I that I'd like to fight and uh, kind of. You don't want to quit. In the you gotta break the... balls. <laughs> <laughs> for twenty million dollars, you should step in the ring. But for yeah. less than that, it's ridiculous. You guys don't get paid enough. Why would you I fight agree. Fedor? There's a footage of him being dropped on his neck. <laughs> he got dropped on his neck. I yeah. want to say it was Kevin Randleman. Yeah, it was he Randleman. dropped him on You're his right. fucking neck, and the guy just got up and, said, and it annoyed him. Now like what? He, yeah, it really it was like a really, paralyzing yeah. drop. And the right. fact that you really are pursuing uh, getting in the ring with him. You know, I'm becoming a fan every day. Every day, I'm becoming more and more of a fan, and I'm learning as I go here. Because I, I did. I, I'll tell you the truth, and I say it to all you guys that come in when Ultimate Fighting first hit. I found my edge. The, the things you guys would do to each other, I'm like, I, I can't effing watch this. And then they finally got some tap-out rules and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I, I go back when it first started where you just watched, like, 
what you thought was the guy's face by the end of the match. Yeah. But now that, I, I hate to admit it, but now that there's some rules in place and some tapping out, I'm really getting into the sport yeah, itself. Yeah, I think the problem with the old version of the sport was we had a lot of mismatches. There were guys that said they just, were this and that and on paper, and then they didn't just really Just breaking get arms and there. legs right on TV. I'm like, <laughs> Some guy wow. in a bathrobe beating a guy in a suit. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, one boxing glove and, just, you know. But, which is weird. Like UPS yeah. workers, just regular yeah. guys beating sure. the shit out of each other. Right, and then... Um, when we talk to these guys and we mention pride, like all of a sudden, like uh, you know, everyone gets scared. Like, oh, he, he's a UFC, a UFC guy. You can't mention pride. What's that? I don't know what that's about. No, it, there's an old brand rivalry. The old owners of Pride, you know, they were the biggest brand in in Japan, which is a huge market for the sport. Right. And then you know, here in the U.S., the the strongest brand was has been the UFC for a long, long time. So there was this always this rivalry. And that's kind of where the Fedor fight comes from, too, because he was the heavyweight champion of Pride. And, yeah. Uh, you know, who's got the best fighters? They had a little bit different rules. They fight in a ring. We fight in a cage. We can drop elbows. They can soccer kick and stomp. Sure. You know, there was all these questions that were being asked. And now uh, the UFC bought the Pride brand and kind of killed the brand. And a lot of those fighters are now coming over. Noguera was, you know, mm -hmm. he's the heavyweight champion now in the UFC. He he was a Pride fighter. Rampage was a Pride fighter. Several other, you know, former Pride fighters have come over. Henderson, uh, Crow Cop, others, right. and, and, and not fared well, but uh, some of them have. It's amazing. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, Randy, you, you really are a legend in, in, in that. I mean, you've beaten everybody. I mean, uh, you were one of the three that Liddell wanted to have. You know, I mean, it's like uh, you've yeah. beaten Tito. I mean, you fought everybody. Uh, there's nobody you seem to be afraid of. Well, I've I've had an amazing ride in the sport. It's been a blast, and uh, I've had some great fights and fought some very very tough guys. It's been a lot of fun. Who hits the hardest? Well, I mean, it's it's hard to say. That the interesting thing about being knocked out is you don't remember a lot. And Chuck, you know, Chuck managed to knock me out in the in the rematch. So uh, he, still he must run, hit pretty is hard. Still, <laughs> is Chuck still uh, in the game? Yeah, Chuck's still fighting. Because, he, uh, he was supposed to fight uh, Rashad Evans coming up, but uh, sustained a, a hamstring injury, I think, and, and pulled out. Oh, so, in England, right? Uh, I think it was going to be in England. Hey, might, uh, might have been in Vegas. I the can't The difference remember. between Randy and, and Chuck, they're both animals. You just look at them, and you yeah. know they're a major problem. But what I like about Randy, he actually smiles, which is good. <laughs> Shows a little more... Uh, a little more, you know, human than Chuck. Chuck, Chuck we love Chuck. He does our show all the yeah. time. But, yeah, man, that guy, guy does not smile. Uh -huh. We just want him guy. to crack one smile. He's uh, he, he just sometimes he gets really quiet. You just hear him breathing. It's yeah, like, like a bull. <sighs> <sighs> He's just breathing through this fucking uh, savage face. Uh, yeah, uh, just amazing. What, what's, uh, I, this is probably hack, but uh, what's the worst injury you had doing the ultimate fighting thing? Uh... A few years ago, I was fighting Rico Rodriguez back when I was originally a heavyweight, and I, I caught an elbow in the in the fifth round of the fight and fractured the lemur papricia, the thin bone between your sinuses and your eye socket, oh, which God. wasn't fun. That took a while to heal. And then in my last fight, I, I broke my ulna, my left arm. And the the eye thing was worse than breaking an arm? Oh, yeah, a lot worse. Why? Just to, Your just... vision. You're, still, you know, you're right. messing with your vision and, and your eyes. You know, that's never, never a good thing. Did you but, win the uh, fight you broke your arm in? Yes, I did. Okay, that, that was amazing yeah. to me. I thought so. It was uh, Gonzaga, who was the guy that knocked out Mirko Krokop, who everybody thought was unbeatable. Me too. I was fucking Billy bandwagon on this guy. I'm like, no one will ever beat him. <laughs> he gets the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. Um, but he, you were blocking a kick. Yeah, and, and had your arm broken. Yeah. And, and, and you won guy the fight. Like a mule. Let me tell you what happens. Let's say uh, during a break... One of us walks to the bathroom and we, you know, we twist an ankle. Oh, the show's over. We go uh, home. Yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to think you continued fighting and won the fight with a broken arm. Do you think that guys don't get hurt as bad as like in boxing? A couple of guys have gotten killed because they, they're taking forty-five minutes of punishment. Um, but you guys are pretty much. I mean, the fights don't go that long because there's, there's the threat of an arm break and, and, and it's done. Well, it's, I think the wrestling and submission aspect of the of the it's sport. In the the create... It's in the referee's hand. He's the most. Dangerous guy if you don't know his job. You're absolutely He's right. He's got to know because let me tell you, the last time I was in a cage, Randy, I didn't tap <laughs> yeah. out. I went gay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't uh, fuck around. Uh, I don't wait for the referee to control my fucking life. Uh, I stay where you are. Why? It's over. <laughs> but this is what I worry about. You've got some great referees there because if they don't jump in in time, yeah. and it's it could be dangerous. That's what I look at the referee. You guys don't mean nothing anymore. You're out of the fucking picture. <laughs> we go there to see the referees, see if they're going to know you guys. I'm uh, waiting for one guy to pick the referee up and throw him out of the fucking cage. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think you're me. absolutely right. I think, uh, <laughs> we, we've had no deaths in the 14 years that our sport's been around in the U.S. market, and, and uh, 
you know that's that's a great track record to have and I don't, we don't get to sustain pounding to the head uh, that the, the boxing sustains it makes it because of the wrestling aspect the the grappling aspect of the sport it makes it really mm-hmm. hard to watch uh boxing when you start getting into the ultimate fighting game it, I, it's just hard i still love boxing i mean and i don't know a mixed martial artist that isn't training in boxing it's a it's right, a piece sure. of what we do but but, uh, uh, but when you see the boxing you know you, you know the feet aren't coming up or nothing no elbows <laughs> it's all yeah. just you know but i think the other dimensions of our sport is kind of made the sport look yeah you kind of made the sport look you know, look dated. I yeah. mean, uh, people would argue, and you know, old school, and say you you, you got to be out of your mind. But that's my I, I, my take on it anyway. Well, I, cage wrestling has hurt boxing, in my opinion, yeah, because yeah. cage wrestling is uh, this is like uh, you want to fuck with me in boxing. You jab, you step away, you dance around, you go in the corner, you talk to the guy, you get a minute fresh, you get up again, <laughs> you discuss it. But that fucking thing, the twelve rounds are over. Then a guy says, "I don't know, I could have beat him." Who gives a shit? <laughs> Now, uh, hey, what about the, uh, the welterweight champ uh-huh. who turns around and knocks out this 300-pound uh, uh, wrestler? Oh, Give me Mayweather. a break. We had What's the, his uh, name? Uh, Weatherby. Weather. 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 What are you doing that for? Because you ruin your reputation. <laughs> He's over there hitting us 300 pounds. Are you nuts? This guy can pick him up and bend him in seven pieces. So this guy, who's a great fighter, no question, but he's a great defensive fighter, this guy, uh, Weather, Mayweather. Mayweather, Mayweather. Sure. You understand? Because there's so many fucking Mayweathers. I don't know which one is who anymore. <laughs> so what Anyway, Randy, we had enough of you. Goodbye. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we had Mayweather on the show. That's timing. And, and of course, you should be scared of Mayweather, right? But oh, yeah. uh, He's we, great. Were, we were more scared of his uh, entourage. He, well, yeah. you're dealing with guys that are so in awe of this man that they, they overprotect them, and he's the fighter. What right. the fuck does a fighter need a bodyguard? Dude, these guys. Why would, why would Randy need a bodyguard? These, Who the fuck's going to fight with this guy? These guys were... <laughs> Pay what? attention. What about your partner? He doesn't even breathe anymore. What happened? <laughs> you know, you're, you're absolutely right. I had a little dilemma at the house. My, my alarm went off, so I had to make sure somebody was over there taking care of it. Yeah. It happens, you Are know? Are you nasal to me? Uh, no. Are you ever cold in the head? No. I should sound down. Maybe it's my hearing aid. But all right, let's, let's get back to... Uh, you know, sound a little na- let's get back to talent. You sound a little nasal? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to stop that. Uh, God. <laughs> Anthony also has guns like uh, Randy, but they're a little different. So, you know, he's well prepared for a home invasion. Well, you know, you got it. You got to be prepared. Yeah. If you can't be prepared, you know, with muscles and stuff, you got to have uh, superior firepower. Yeah, Pat, you got to talk to Anthony. You uh, got You got any pieces there? You're Italian. You got to own a gun, right? It's the law. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. I don't fight with nobody. We discuss things. <laughs> I don't fucking raise my hands to nobody unless you know what you're doing. If I raise my hands to somebody, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's the way it is because my father says, don't make a bully shit. When you raise your hands, kill the motherfucker. <laughs> so this is what you do. I don't raise. I'm a gentleman. If someone says you're out of order, I apologize. I ain't looking for any fucking problem. That's why I went gay last Thursday. Now I'm looking for someone to ungay me. I'll see you Thursday at my place, Randy. <laughs> People don't fuck with you in public unless they're looking for a lawsuit. Like this, this guys that would do. That's probably why they have bodyguards because again, Mayweather's making twenty million of a, a fight. Yeah. I take the beating. For the suit. I mean, that's what people... Yeah, those guys that see you as a mark. That, yeah. You know, you, you know that That'd unless your life is in danger, you really have no... <laughs> then you could sit you there and you go... Even, I mean, you have to defend yourself. I got, to that, but I got lots that, of money. <laughs> I got uh, lots uh, of money. <laughs> this is great. I threw them <laughs> and I got money. Let's go to the circus. <laughs> You're shitting into a bag for the yeah, rest of your life? Of course. Yeah, not worth it. Good point. Hey, uh, what are we promoting today, Randy? Red Belt? Red Belt, yeah. What's that about? It's a Sony Classic Picture uh, written and directed by David Mamet. Uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor is the lead character. and it's uh, The backdrop of the movie is mixed martial arts. It's uh, a well-written, typical Mamet movie with some you know, subversion and some things in it. And not just a fight movie. It, it is a really cool fight. Kind of a, an American samurai story. So, is this your first acting? Uh, seventh picture, oh, okay. but uh, the last couple I've been trying to steer away from just the thuggish fight roles and <laughs> do some more serious acting. Obviously, you can't fight forever, so. Uh, who uh, do you play in this movie? I play a, an announcer, Dylan Flynn. That, uh, that ends up fighting the, somebody, come on. No, actually, I don't fight in this wow. movie. So is it that was part fun. of it? You're like, yeah, cool. I don't want to. Look, I'll do the role, role, but. Yeah, I was, you know, was interested, be, first of all, because it's a Mammoth movie. I mean, he's he's fantastic, uh, and I love the the plot of the story, and I didn't have, you know, it wasn't about the fighting for me. I would love to have had Voss in here, though, because our friend Rich Voss is a really bad actor. But he also <laughs> took, worse. He took martial oh. arts, and I just wanted, I just wanted, I, I, I don't want to 
asked him to spar, but I wanted to ask him to throw a kick or something for you just to observe and see, because he really thinks that he knows the martial arts, and we just know that he's just a fucking deluded idiot, and he's someday going to be killed trying to fight a little man. We could uh, have Pat Cooper do some of his uh, kung fu moves for everybody. Pat? Let me tell you, I like Chinese food. That's as far as I go with fucking kung fu, and, you know, and mixed martial arts. I like a mixed salad. All this bullshit, so much fucking confusion. Everybody's beating the shit out of each other. Now he's going into the movie business. Watch what, if he dances with the stuff. I'm fucking getting out of here. <laughs> it's about time he laughs, this guy here. He's got a great smile, a great laugh. It's yeah. about time, you yeah. know. And uh, You've been working him for a few He's minutes. a man of all season, but it's raining a lot. That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> very, very good. So you're not afraid uh, of, of, uh, an, uh, of Fedor? No, not at all. Uh, I think I, I, I think it'd be a you great You can't be great afraid matchup. of anybody if you're going to get in that cage. No, they, yeah, you have to go in You, know, you mean people go in the cage and are afraid? Some guys are. You can see that. Yeah, what the hell are they going in the cage for? Yeah, exactly. Are you crazy? You see it in their eyes? <laughs> that must be something when you see it in their eyes and just go, oh, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can tell. You can, you can see just say, oh, you and You can see the doubt and, and fear yeah. in a guy's face. So. Oh, God. I, that's like terrible. when Steve tries to produce. Hurt. That's uh, when you can get hurt. If they don't know what you're thank doing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I heard <laughs> Hey, uh, we got some Randy Fins <laughs> on the line here. Let's say hi to Jason in New Jersey. Jason, what's up? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, hey Jason. I just, I just wanted to say, I saw an old episode of Pros vs. Joe's. They had Randy on it. And before the show, they introduced all the guys. So all the athletes are coming out, and every guy that came out before him, all the people are sitting there, they're just trash-talking them left and right. Randy comes running out. And I swear to Christ, at least two of the contestants pulled a big nagel in their pants when they were sitting there <laughs> trying to watch Randy on come out. I mean, it, their jaws dropped like, Burr. Have you guys watched Pros uh, vs. Joe's? It's a, it's it's a pretty amazing show. What do you do it for Pros cool. versus Joe's? Yeah, they actually put us in a cage. Oh we we did a five minute five minute submission round with each of the contestants. Were you the, told not to hurt the guy? Why? Well, I, I think it's a big thing for the producers. They don't want anybody seriously injured. Right. So you know, you know that, the that concept, right? Jimmy, you know, know the to. concept, right? Yeah, pro have, athletes with uh, just regular, fucking regular nuts. Joes. Go home and get a fucking job. Who wants to jump in with this guy? How can this man control himself? You know, with the you know, the, the producer, yeah. well, don't hurt yeah, that guy. Yeah. The guy kicks him in the balls. What's Randy going to do? Sit yeah. there and start those fucking tweet tweet? Yeah. He's going to break his I'm fucking with you, back. Pat, I'm with you. Uh, it's very hard to control I mean, you because you're in that uh, environment. It wasn't bad. It, it, I saw it, it, it you were trying to hit him. Don't give it a <laughs> shit, Randy. He'll get you on tape. You know, pros versus Joe's, if it's like you yeah. shooting free throws with LeBron James or, or taking on the badminton champion of the world. Right. Okay. Badminton. <laughs> but going with the, you know, in a with an ultimate fighter and you're a regular Joe, you gotta be insane. A yeah. porno chick I'd do that with. Like, I dare you to suck my dick. How long did somebody actually last with you? Uh, well, I went five minutes with each of the guys. It was who got submitted the least amount of times in five minutes. Uh, so What number was that? 852? <laughs> <laughs> five, six, and seven. So the guy that, did, that only got submitted five times, I think, won that event. Five times in how many minutes again? Five, five minutes. minutes yeah. Aren't you gonna? Aren't you supposed to have something with? I, I want. I'm off memory. Is it, is it Kurt Angle? Kurt Angle is has been talking about getting into MMA for quite a while, and I have the opportunity to potentially do a submission match with him uh, this summer after I'm free from the UFC. So I'm hoping to get a chance to do that. I'd love to choke the shit out of him. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> you would, right? Well, there's something about. There's also audio of him. I think it was Angle, kind of like uh, talking about like uh, 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 how he thinks he would do very well. And Liddell said that if we fought, he's never been hit like I'll hit him. Like if he got uh, into that's the, uh, actually true. He, you know, Kurt has a great wrestling pedigree as a collegiate wrestler, and you know, he hasn't done that for years. He was an Olympic champion. He, he, he comes from a great wrestling background, but I mean, we just saw Brock Lesnar, who's also a very, very good wrestler, and how he fared making the transition to MMA and jumping in with a top guy yeah, right like out of the gates. He didn't last very long. So I think Kurt has potential if he wants to do the work and train and learn the things he needs to learn to be a f complete fighter, but. To just jump in with his wrestling pedigree at this point, he's going to get his butt whooped. Did Mir, did Mir beat that guy with the with he the did. beard? Yeah, he did. Mir beat, beat him? He beat him. He, he submitted because him the, the guy first with round. the beard, is suffocates you for Christ's sake. Yeah. I know you want to get in a wrestling match with this guy. That goddamn beard electrocute you. <laughs> <laughs> electrocute you. <laughs> Why is it he never had a fight and the first one was a main event? Yeah, that but was, Mir beat him, right? Yeah, he did. And he, PJ, did he went out in, uh, out in London? LJ, Which the guy day? from Hawaii. Oh, BJ Penn. Yes, he did. Another great guy. Yeah. Another great guy. Yeah. Pat, I don't how think do I know what I'm talking how about. How do you know so much about Let this? Let me tell you something. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Listen to me. When you're not working, you read. <laughs> and watch but you TV. may get lucky and wind up on this fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How about uh, Kimbo Slice? Uh, he's a great street fighter, legendary street fighter yeah, on YouTube. Right. Black dude, really a, a tough fucking dude, bare knuckle street fighter, getting involved in. Uh, he's with Elite XC and. Uh, well, Mir beat him, right? He's trained. No, Mir hasn't fought uh, Kimbo. Kimbo hasn't oh, fought any, I think, right? any any top ten guys ah, yet. Yeah. Uh, they're wisely choosing his opponents and uh, and bringing him along. I think given some time, he's going to be a very very good mixed martial artist. Oh, really? But right now, he, he's still predominantly a striker. Uh, he's working on his ground skills. He's working a lot with Boss Rutten, who's a you know a legend in the sport. Uh, he trained with us for a while in the Extreme Couture in Vegas. But uh, great attitude. Nothing like what you would think. You know, seeing the street fighting videos and stuff. He, he's a very nice guy. Very quiet and and just comes in hard nosed, asks a lot of questions, and works hard in the gym. So that tells me he's got the right idea. He knows he's not just going to walk in and beat the shit out of everybody. So you guys don't resent mm -hmm. him? Like, I sense a little resentment. Like, you talk about Kurt Angle, almost like, you don't fucking come in with that I'm a star wrestler shit. And no, no, because Kimbo doesn't come in that right. way. I mean, he comes out and he fights. He's not scared of anybody, but I think he's the first one to say, oh, look, I don't know everything there is to know. In this game, I'm still learning. I mean, he's, I've heard him do his interviews. He, he, he doesn't come in thinking, oh, I'm just going to fuck everybody up. He doesn't act that way. So uh, I got no issue with Kimbo. I think uh, I hope that Elite XC doesn't take the street fighting video and use that to market him because I don't think that helps the sport. Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. But uh, but he's got a ton of potential. He seemed like a nice guy as he was picking people up off the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did a couple of times. Kimbo, you've seen him fight, right? Of course you have. Anyway, Kimbo, I was picked up off the pavement, but not for that reason. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the phones. We got a bunch of uh, Randy fans checking in. We got Bill in Kansas. Bill, what's up? Hey, Opie. hey, Randy, huge fan, man. I just wanted to know if there's, there's a beef between you and Dana White just being blown out of proportion. Dana White. Well, I've got no beef with Dana. Dana's Dana. You know, I've been around Dana for seven years now. I know. You know, he, he's a passionate guy about the sport and. He's very protective of his brand and, and uh, I think sees me as a threat because I, I resigned from the UFC and so he's you know said some inflammatory things but I don't take it personal and uh, I think in the long run it all works out and, and hopefully you know we'll change some things in the sport and make it better but uh, you know that's just Dana he, he's going to say things like that and do things like that. That's what did he, he say? I, I have no idea what he. Oh, uh, he, you know he's he's made a lot of things. Uh, He's said a lot of things publicly about me because they want, you know, they obviously want me to continue to compete for the UFC, and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me right now. So, uh, uh -huh. you know, he's he's called me this and that, and you know, it's not even worth repeating. But, uh, <laughs> uh oh, well, now is Fedor? You must have been a real good one. bad. Yeah, yeah. must have been a good one. I'm not even going to push that one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not fighting as a UFC fighter then. If you fight uh, uh, Fedor, uh, is he are you fighting under Pride, or are you guys just kind of both going? Well, Pride's solo? gone. The UFC bought Pride oh, okay. and basically killed the brand. So. Uh, uh, it'll happen somewhere else. We don't know where it's going to happen yet. Uh, Mark Cuban is a third party stepped up and is helping me file with the state of Nevada to get a declaration on my contract and see what the state thinks about when I'm free and clear of the UFC contract. Uh, Mark uh, Mark Cuban rules, by the way. So uh, he's, you know he's helped me tremendously in that yeah, in that he, regard, he and uh, we'll see where the fight turns up. But it's going to happen. For That's sure. great, man. Hey, let's uh, get Mars in here. He's a huge fan. Before oh, we let Randy what, go, uh, Ron in Georgia, what's up? I had a question for uh, Randy. Yes. What's up, Ron? Uh, and you saw the, the human weapon on Discovery Channel. Yes. And uh, they done a test where you wrap, you, you exerted yourself for like five minutes. And uh, a normal person, the creatine levels went sky high and they got exhausted. You were exact opposite. Were you Superman or something? <laughs> no, I, they, they had a little trouble explaining why my lactic acid levels decreased when I was doing that kind of work. I think... Uh, they determined that I used my body naturally through training, kind of adjusted which muscle groups were doing the work, and, and uh, I've managed to become more efficient at elimin eliminating that lactic acid that builds up when your muscles work, uh, which was kind of unique and surprised, surprised me as well. Yeah. That was the, well, that's awesome, man. Well, that was the show where I didn't see it, but I, I've heard a lot about it where they tested you guys, like yeah. how hard you could fight punch science. and all that. Fight, right, exactly. Fight science. I heard it's a great show. Yeah, very cool. They did an amazing job. It was really cool to get all the guys together and, and do the testing with the crash test dummies and stuff. And right. We had a great, really good time. Do you do the elliptical as well? I found that to be very helpful. <laughs> I have a little trouble getting my heart rate up on the elliptical. I, I go to, <laughs> I a, to an Airdyne or, or use the treadmill a lot. I would do sprints on the treadmill. How many uh, push-ups can you 
push out there. I don't know. I haven't I'm done for, I'm push good for ups 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should try to do a manly thing with Randy. Like what? I, I don't know. think I don't so. Even know. Put on dresses and hand our phone numbers over. <laughs> 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 Pat, an idea, maybe something manly we could do with Randy. My only muscle is on my tongue. Huh? If I can't lick it, then it's all over. That's the facts. I get all these guys with muscles and break and thing. When I get out of bed, that's my push-up. When I get back in bed, that's another push-up. I don't give a shit about my muscles, about my legs. I ain't running around the corner. I don't give a fuck. I just want to exist. When I'm breathing, I'm alive. This guy's got to fight, beat the shit out of people. Yeah. I'm a multimillionaire without raising my fucking hands. Are you, really? you are. So You're step outside. You I can take. No, I don't. Are you a multimillionaire? <laughs> Maybe I can't. Maybe I'm full of shit. Too. I don't know. Do you exercise at all, Pat? You've I'm never sorry? Got, you never got into exercising? I don't exercise. I was a bricklayer for 12 fucking years, bending down, lifting up block, bending down, breaking up park. Why should I go after that after 12, 15 years? That was my muscles into this world. It's fucking over. <laughs> so you don't I don't lift up my coffee cup any fucking more. <laughs> I don't want to be involved. I don't go in his business. He better stay out of my fucking business. He starts yeah. getting funny. It's a problem. Uh, Randy, that's a threat, by the way. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't I, I know that I know now. little Al and Peculiar Mary. Uh -oh. I don't fuck his brains up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mars is a big fan. Mars in studio. Martial artist. Hey, Randy, um, we spoke earlier. And, Did uh, you give him a, like, a, like a, a sign of respect? Oh, there he is. Okay. He's got a little something. We spoke earlier, and uh, Pat covered a lot of stuff. I'm surprised that you know so much of it, and so, so does Jim. But I do have one uh, question. We all are looking forward to you fighting Fedor. Win or lose. If Fedor wins or lose with Tim, that's the fight. Yep. You and him. Um, you uh, top no matter what. Even if you lose to Tim, you're the top man. But there is another guy that I, I forgot to ask you about. How about Josh Barnett? How about um, trying to get that win back? Uh, Josh signed with Affliction. That, that show's happening. That's where Tim and Fedor are fighting July 19th. Uh, there'll be a huge show. It's a great bunch of heavyweights. Josh is getting a rematch with Pedro Hizzo, who is one of his losses from back in the day. Uh, and I know Josh real well, and it was a, my first loss in the UFC was, was against Josh. He's a great fighter. Uh, you know, went to Japan since then and, and fought a lot in pride and stuff. And, and, and it's been hot and cold, but it's still, I think, for a big guy, moves really, really well. Great submission guy. So, I mean, there's it's possibility there. Because the other guy that's also um, probably that you would like, uh, but right now he's not doing so well, is Rico Rodriguez. And I think that's where you got the injury yeah, in your face. Yeah, I had the fracture, yeah, to the yeah. eye. Yeah, Rico's, Rico's trying to get himself back on track. I, he's, I he's, think uh, he's speaking French. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, but, go, uh, just go, go, go. Yeah, he's he's still around, still still kind of trying to climb back in shape and compete again at a high level, and, and it'll be interesting to see how that goes for him. I have a question. I, I smell guess. another Saturday virus show. Yeah. Mars. That no one will listen to. Mars. Go ahead, Mars. <laughs> no, go ahead though, Mars. It's very interesting. I'll, I'll, before I'm I want to ask you, uh, do, do, you uh, do you like or dislike uh, uh, Tito? Because I've gotten a, a weird vibe uh, from Chuck about him. Uh, weird vibe? Yeah. Well, uh, you're making fact, it sound vague. He oh, can't I'm, stand him. Well, well yeah, Jimmy's just, not sure if Randy might <laughs> hang out with Tito. Yeah, That's we won't uh, Tito what that was I've always gotten along with Tito, and I think you know going into a fight with Tito, he's going to talk shit. He's going to talk smack. That's just how he operates. So I wasn't offended. You know, he came out with a cane. He did all kinds of stuff because of my age. And <laughs> oh, I, shit. I kind what of, a uh, fucking smart ass. I kind of uh, expected that and, and gave a little of it back to him, which I think caught him off guard. He, <laughs> outside of, of uh, the limelight, he's actually a very nice guy. What was the result of the fight? I'll uh, tell you who's finished. A, I'll he, tell you who's finished. He got a, literally got a spanking. Yeah, he got a spanking. Yeah, yeah, he got a Shamrock. Spanking. He lost to the Oriental kid a couple of weeks ago. Shamrock. What is it? I don't know which one is Frankie Kung Shamrock. Lee, Kung Lee and Frank Shamrock. It was a great fight. What? Was a, that, this fight. guy outboxed him. Out, out, he did everything yeah. but hit him with chopsticks. Yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> right. I'm serious because you're I think right. Shamrock well, at one time, you know, but I think his days are over and I think he should back away for a while and go into the nunnery. <laughs> the convent, huh? hey, hey, Randy, is the money getting better? I think that's one of the things that needs to change in our sport. The, the contracts are very exclusive. They own the fighters from top to bottom. And, yeah, that's, and uh, that's why you know I've got to leave the OC to make the Fede Fedor fight happen. You know, the top fighters should be allowed to fight each other. And, you know, everyone says, oh, you're kicking the hell out of boxing. Well, that that's not exactly true, you know. I think last year, all the MMA fighters combined in the pay-per-views for the UFC got paid $17 million. Mayweather's made more than that in one, one damn fight. fight. So, yeah. so it's, it's definitely not exactly a accurate. Yeah, but so, it's becoming uh, more and more mainstream, and I would assume that would bring a lot more dollars to the sport, right? Well, we hope that some of these new promotions coming up 
want to pay the fighters better and, and give you know the lion's share of those fights back to the fighters instead of keeping it in-house. Go on strike. So. Well, go on strike. <laughs> no. The night of the big fights that we ain't going in that fucking cage, I want to see millions on the table. Then you're afraid that whatever the head of the UFB, ABC, D, F, who don't fucking <laughs> like it, fuck him and say, well, you don't own my life. Who yeah. the fuck's taking these punches, you sick bastard? <laughs> you must make a demand. See, you're tough in the ring. Outside, you're not. You're a pussy. <laughs> Whoa! No, Pat, Pat, I got to correct you on that. Step that's, inside. That's what he's doing now. That's how come I'm he's sorry. not part of the UFC anymore. Yeah. That's part of what Randy's doing. He's fighting. Well, how come this guy's behind this me? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were throwing your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Plus, the new sport compared to boxing. I mean, uh, it's amazing how fast it's growing. It's still like, growing, right? Because the guys like you and Chuck who become like these faces uh, for the sport. Right. People like become. Well, and you have to give UFC credit where credit is due. They've changed the face of the sport. Uh, you know, the, the TV show, the first season that Chuck and I worked on. Oh, that changed the landscape for mixed martial arts. I Broke got a question. A uh -oh. What bothers yeah. me? Mm -hmm. On pay per view. What happens in boxing, a week later, you see the pay-per-view fight on regular television. Uh -huh. Why isn't that happening on this on the MMA and all these pride shows? Why do we have to wait a year to see maybe you that fought last week? Why can't we see yeah. the fight? Like uh, Sarah and Pierre fought last week. Why yeah, can't I see that they'll fight? They'll do the reruns of the pay-per-view for the next month. And then after that, that fight will show up probably on Spike TV on an UFC I've been looking at Spike, like and that, I don't so. see. I don't. Well, I still yeah, see. Yeah, it'll guys be a said, while. They're, they're really? still trying to sell the pay per views for a month ah, after the show. Thank you. That what happened seven dollars? What happened yeah. with HBO? <laughs> HBO is in negotiations to to, uh, to to run it like they ran boxing, which I think would have helped uh, both. Uh, but uh, did HBO want to run it, and UFC didn't want to well, control? Well, I think uh, HBO is still very entrenched in boxing, and and one of the few places where boxing has been successful in selling pay per views, and a lot of that I think is is because of Golden Boy uh, and the, and the matchups they're doing, and and the twenty four seven, a lot of those things they're doing to create an emotional interest in those fights, uh, and they are interested in getting into MMA, but. Uh, they didn't get along with Dana. That you know there are control issues there, and and uh, so somebody will end up doing a deal with HBO. Yeah. It will I happen. worry when t when Jones made a statement that he may want to go into your kind of thing, and I think that would have been a big mistake. Although he's going to fight for a title, I think, in a couple of months. Oh, Tom Jones. Oh, he woke up. <laughs> <laughs> he woke up. I don't know. I come on this show. This guy takes more naps. <laughs> Roy Jones, you dickhead. <laughs> All right. We should, uh, we should get uh, Randy oh, out of here. Shit. Randy, pleasure meeting you, man. You too. Thanks for having me on.